<laughs> I knew there was some train stuff up here. Hello everybody and welcome to LMM and a brand new series that we're going to be doing during this time of not going out called Laurie's Gone a Little Loco. Now I've been at home now for three days before I ventured up into my loft to have a look and see if there was any train stuff there because I know a lot of you guys have mentioned before that you'd like to see me do some modern railway stuff and well modern railways are something that I can safely do indoors. So presenting to you the most shoddily built baseboard ever in the history of mankind and I'm not going to show you what it looks like underneath this nice um, sheet that I put over the top of it because you will lose all respect for me because when I say it's terrible I truly truly do mean it is awful. But I have here in front of me this is a baseboard for an N-gauge layout that I have that was a, an extension piece which I've never used. So this is going to become a plateau for showing you things. So I found many things in my loft all of which I'd forgotten bar the set that I'm about to show you which I knew was up there. And so I, I thought I'd go up find that and then found many other things. So the good news is there are several episodes now of content ready for Laurie Goes A Little Loco. So that's good. So without going any further, let's have a look at what we're looking at today. And that is this quite lovely, incomplete trying train set. Now this was given to me by my good friend Nick. And I must confess, since he gave it to me, it spent most of that time up in the attic. And uh, it's never been run. Now clearly it's not quite how it should be. There's a uh, missing the box lid for starters and also various other things. For instance, I don't think there's quite enough track in it and this set shouldn't have a set of points. But what it is, is the 1966 to 1967 intercity set. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the fact that they're Pullman coaches rather than being intercity coaches. So clearly Hornby weren't, or trying as it was at the time, weren't paying too much attention because this is a Pullman train. And it is a class, class 37 locomotive and three Pullman cars with two names. We have um, Ruth and Mary, and then a parlor car at the back, which is car number 79. Now the locomotive was produced in this color with this running number of D6830. Is that right? Upside down? Probably. For three years, it was started in production in 1965, and then two more years, primarily being part of the set. But the, the coaches here, they were in production for 15 years. I think finally these, they were stopped made like this in 1973. So they are, they were old coaches by this point. And this set here would have sent you back in today's money around about a hundred pounds. Something like that if I've done my math correctly, which knowing me is unlikely. Now this set, I think when it was new, should have been an oval of track plus an uncoupler. I really don't know what the point was of having an uncoupler with this set because without the point, so that means that this shouldn't be in the set. Um, why would you want to be uncouple your train when there's nowhere to put the train? It's like, uncoupled it, right? oh, the train's now in the way. So I'm going to start off by placing this just off to the side here and uh, slowly bringing the things out. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the track. Well, this is Triang's <clears throat> interesting track. It is horrible and... Um, has a kind of a childlike toy quality. The rails are huge comparatively, especially if you compare it to modern track. And um, it's all horrendously pitted and rusty. I do not know if this will work. The thing I do like about this track though, is if you get, there, there are definitely not enough pieces in here to make a complete oval. I've just noticed that. That on the end, you have like a half sleeper. You can see that a thin bit, but when you put the two pits together, like so, they go together and make one complete sleeper. And I quite like that, it goes together quite nicely. It's a horrible looking track. It has, um, the surface of this is very rough and hopefully this will clean up, uh, but nothing has run on this in my ownership and I've had this for quite a few years. Uh, and the other thing with this track is when you pull or disassemble it, the rails move quite happily. So um, we're well, gonna have to give that quite a clean up to see if we'll get anything out of it. But I only have, two, three, so that's three there, plus five pieces of curviness. So five pieces of curviness, 
um, does not make an oval. Thankfully, kicking around up with this set were a couple of other loose bits of track which don't fit in this, because these are, I think, first radius, known as R483. So I assume this is basically what first radius corners curves became. It's quite a lot in common with the modern track. You've got the hole in the middle there for the pins to go in. And there is a gap, I don't know if you can see that, I'll get a close up of that, between every single sleeper and the rail. So modern track sits a lot lower. This is a much higher track. And I think the spacing on the sleepers is also a bit further apart. And that's a bit more prototypical because modern double O track, the sleeper spacing is very close together. It's not prototypical, it should be further apart. In fact, I, I think this looks more how track should, despite the fact that is a exceptionally steep corner. And then we have this point here, which again is the uh, same design. And this little mechanism here is basically what points were for, well, for years. I think Hornby kind of went away from it and then came back to this. It doesn't seem to want to lock. It just seems, so um, I wonder if you could run through that and uh, open it up. All it is is that little mechanism there. Whether this actually will make, uh, the contacts are still there underneath. The frog on the side of this is huge, so I can imagine nothing will run happily through that without stalling. You'll need some speed on that. And the rails are actually black on this with uh, rust and corrosion. And then also in the set, we have these two straights, which have become R600. And at the time they were known as made in England. There is no product number on that, just trying. This is, again, before Hornby, apparently, because this is just trying. No trying Hornby, just trying. And again, it's got the half sleeper on the end, so you push it together, and we get a complete section. I, I do like the way they go together. That's quite nice. So that's a, enough of that. So hopefully, we'll get an oval made up, and we'll see what we get out of that. So most importantly, first, let's go straight to the locomotive. So. Yes. Now, I, like most rail enthusiasts, am very partial to a Class 37. And for when this came out, this was actually quite a nice model. There's a nice lot of moulded detail on it. Got the moulded roof horns there, the bonnet, access hatches on the front and rear, vents everywhere. There's, there's a fair bit of, of detail on this, and we've got the glazed windows you can see there. And you know what? It's quite nice. Sadly, this one here at some point has touched something hot, I assume a soldering iron. And it's just damaged the, the bottom half of it there, but from your side, it looks fine. It's quite heavy on this end because that's where the motor is. It's the old uh, X04 motor. This is, predates the Ringfield motor bogies. And it also means that it's only got two sets of wheels. This is just a dummy bulge in the middle there. But uh, those wheels are filthy. The chances of this running, I've never have to have this running. So the chances of whether this is going to run, I would say are quite astronomically small. And um, you know, it's, it's very nice. It looks like a 37 more or less, well, slightly plastic version. It's got some lovely details, like on the end, you've got the lamp brackets. The buffers are probably, yeah, they look fine. Obviously nothing strong. Little details like molded lights. I like the head code in the front, which is a sticker. The transfer on the side actually does say British Railways. You know, it's, it's got enough, it's nothing compared to a modern day locomotive, but uh, it, there is enough detail there for it to be a passable, passable locomotive. And for what I want to do, absolutely superb. Moving on to these 15 years worth of production, Pullman coaches. And the first thing I've got to say is the amount of detail on this for a coach from 19, well, 1950 something they started. It's actually brilliant. You've got interior detail, which is you've got the tables, the chairs, um, the lamps, and then it looks like maybe cups or something on the, on the tables inside. There's glazing throughout, including in the, where the, the lavatory would be, you have the kind of frosted effect you can't see through. And there's glazing on the end as well. Again, by today's standard, nothing at all. I know modern coaches, you've got the lights that come on on these, which are superb. But for the time, it's quite nice, actually. I mean, there's, there's a couple of gaps, like there's just at the top of the roof there next door to the Pullman. There's a hole, which is probably where the, uh, the roof clips on. And it looks, okay, a little plasticky. 
and of course it's going to be on these quite thick triang wheels which means that the flange is quite big so if you put it onto modern track it will bounce along the sleepers rather than riding on the rails but again on this track it, it really doesn't matter that much they are quite nice so this one's mary and then coming out now this one is ruth which has got some marks on it but uh, i think they will wipe off more or less yeah just some marks onto the roof of this this one's identical it's just a different bit of lining different sticker on it they do look quite nice together don't they that makes a yeah that looks they're nice and then finally the only coach that's a little different the molding is a bit different on this we have the parlor coach next we've got the luggage compartment crew compartment on the end and probably yes probably was the brake coach as well so it's nice it's got the same amount of detail the doors on this particularly for the luggage compartment here they look particularly plastic um, whereas the other doors for the, the passengers to get in on the ends because they're recessed you don't notice it so much whereas um, those ones do there's a good bit of detail on here you've got uh, the brake cylinder just poking down there there's no rigging but you've got the brake cylinder and uh, a couple other little bits of detail on it so it's as soon as you turn it upside down it looks awful but and then you've got trying made in england on this but again it's, if you don't look too closely like the distance you are away from me now that's quite acceptable they'll look nice enough now of course i prefer this set it with steam but the steam engines of this period don't look very good whereas that is still quite a nice model i do like a 37. Now, I guess the first question is, we'll uh, tidy this lot away out of the way and we'll get a transformer out, which is, I've got a Backman transformer, tra Backman controller, and we'll put some power directly to this and see after, ooh, well, I think I've, it's been in my loft for maybe five years now. And prior to that, my friend, I think he's in his forties and he had it when he was a kid. Oh, he might, ooh, but then, so yes he must have i guess he had it when it was new because i've had it a while maybe he's a bit he must be a bit older in these 40s yeah he definitely is but um he's probably had this since it was new so i rather suspect that this hasn't run well certainly not this decade probably not this millennium and quite possibly i'm going to go out and guess and say I think this class 37 hasn't run since 1980. That's my guess. I imagine he was bored of model trains by then. Oh, there's another bit of damage on it. It's definitely, there's a little mark just there by the, behind the rear door. It's definitely had a close call with a soldering iron. I wonder if it's stopped working at some, hmm. It's never a good stage, is it? The thought that it's got uh, marks from the soldering iron kind of imply that it's knackered and i i do love the box on this i love this old cardboard box a lovely old feeling cardboard with yellow in it it's got such a lovely retro feel to it and it is absolutely full of stuff <laughs> tat and uh, could do with the clean with that said let's see if we can get any life out of this thing so the first thing to do is obviously turn it over have a little see if it will stay on its own and then I'll reach my little backman control panel here. Now this thing has been kicking around in my room for a couple of years now. And I keep meaning to take it over to the storage and put it with my other railway stuff and haven't ever managed to get around to it. So um, that's actually done us rather well because without this, I wouldn't be able to do anything because I can't go out to get any new supplies. So we're going to turn this up to uh, full power and uh, just touch on the two wheels. Oh, look at that. I did not expect that to work. Now these things have got like little scrapers on them. So we're going to attach it onto there and there and just see if we can get a bit of the gunk off these wheels. I am very surprised this is running. Look at that, look at the gunk that's come off that. That's amazing that is. Well that frankly, ladies and gentlemen, is amazing. I cannot believe for a second that that actually fired up. 
and worked. And having scraped off the wheels, they look a lot better. Brilliant. So with that, I suppose it's uh, get this track out, lay that out, and we'll see. Um, well, yeah, I'll see what happens. See if we can actually get this to do a circuit. So that'd be quite exciting. First train it's pulled in however many years. I really want this gets going now. This is exciting. Right, so the next thing to try is if we can bodge up these to provide power to the track. So I'm going to stick this one under there like so. That seems to work. And we'll stick this one under this side if we can get it wiggly in. Never mind, we'll use one of these straight pieces. So we'll connect this up. Wow, this is looking very black. I find the chances of anything running over this to be astronomically small. Good, so wiggle that in and put the, the little piece touching the bottom there. Lovely, like so, hopefully. Perfect, right. So next stage, locomotive onto track. Like that, and now full power. Nothing. Nothing at all. So I rather suspect this track is going to need quite a bit of cleaning to get anything out of it. So there is absolutely no life there whatsoever. So uh, I suppose with that, let's get cleaning. Oh well, it does come up. Oh, and the difference to the feel there is unreal. So that's what I've cleaned. You can see it's still pretty bad. But then we come around here and you can see very much there, the side that I have given a rub versus the side I have not. That's quite bad. So uh, we'll just clean up this whole section and see what we can do. You can kind of hear it sounding rough. So uh, place your bets now, lads and ladies in the comments. Is this going to work? Am I going to be able to run a loco on this old vintage track? So if not, I have to go digging the loft again and see if I've got any modern track. Because this is um, the most modern track I could find. Yes, I know that's bad, but again, most of my track is with my actual layouts, which are stored elsewhere. But it is the perfect time during this time of uh, staying in to do model railways. And I'd be delighted to see photos of your own model railways, guys. If you want to show us in the Discord, we have a chat dedicated to uh, models and model railways. So show us the layouts you're working on. Join our Discord, the links in the video description. And um, yeah, join us and show us what you're working on. Are your model railway efforts better than mine at the moment? Well, I'm sure they are. Let's see if we get any life out of this thing now. Again, this will be the first time in a good 50 years this has moved under its own power. Oh, on its own railway. That did. That's because that was not touching, isn't it? We did have a bit of movement there. That was exciting. Stick that back in there. Yes, uh, this is very much the wrong way to be doing this. Ah. Well, we did have life, and uh, now we don't. So let's just try this again and see if we've actually got power to both wheels on it. So when we try and apply power to it again, there is absolutely Absolutely nothing. So it has now died. So that means I'm going to have to take it apart and um, see if I can figure out what's gone wrong with it. Presenting the motor bogey from this, and I found that this here, 
on the top. This is the X04 motor. Pickups. Oh, where's my pointing tool? Pickups there and there. Take the power along here to the top. And then we have this uh, nut on top. Now, what I've adjusted was this here, these two contacts here, this was loose and pointing off like that. So there was no power. So when I applied power to the locomotive there, there was nothing. But when I actually applied it directly to the brushes, so we have a contact there, which is isolated and one on this side, I got power. And I realized that this was loose. So I have no idea how it worked when we put power to it. Absolutely none. So all we had to do is just pull that round so it touches on that side. Then that drops in there and there's a little retaining pin. You can see, just see there. So all we do now is just tighten that up by hand, making sure that stays in place. This is a lot easier to do if I've got two hands rather than trying to film at the same time. Get around back into position, you pain. Ah, there we go. Like so. Um, that's now tight. So if I now place the power roughly on, turn the power up full, lay one on the track, I'll lay the other on the track, it pulls off on its own. So it's alive. As I have it in bits, I might as well take you through the reassembly of this. So how this ran, I will never know. So first of all, we'll put that back on the track. We'll line this up behind it like so. He says. Like, there we go. And then this goes over the top and rests like so. Now somewhere there, we have this little retaining clip here, which just slides in like so. And it really is that simple. And so that's now a complete locomotive. Being careful not to lose this piece, we pick the loco shell up and I have lost uh, the yellow end on this end. Not sure, it's just come apart with handling. And then we have a retaining lug here, which is cleverly disguised as the head code. That's a slide over, get just it through there. If you get it just in the right position, there you go, the head code's in the right position, that will drop on. That just needs to slide this way a little bit. So we just need to line that right up. There we go. There's a nice interlocking noise as that comes through. Like so, and that's now on. So all that remains is to turn it upside down. Turn it upside down, find the little screw there, find the hole for the screw, which is there. And we just drop it through like that. Get a nice little screwdriver and we can do the whole thing back up, like so. Perfect. So having reassembled the engine, connected the track back up, let's see if it will actually move under its own power now. And it does. Will it come back? Perfect. So. That's legitimately the first time this has moved under its own power for like 50 years, which is just shows kind of how good these things are. I mean, obviously it's not as detailed or the control's not there. I mean, that's still quite, ah, see, it's still so, so you know, it's not as stool proof as a, a modern locomotive, but that's not bad. I can live with that. That's, that's quite wonderful. So, I'm now going to build a railway and let's see how much track I've got and what I can make out of the bits I've got, which means it's going to be a lot of cleaning and a lot of fiddling about with stuff. But let's get a loop going, get this vintage set up and running.
So it would appear that I do not have a complete set. There's no uncoupling ramp, I've got this point instead, and it doesn't actually make an oval. You see, I have an interesting blend of first radius and second radius curves. So that makes this kind of off center shape. But I've got this kind of siding. So the first thing we're going to do now is place the locomotive onto the track, like so. And we're going to see if for the first time in something like 50 years, if it will make a trip round the line. Now I've given this all a good clean with this and a rub down with some electrical contact cleaner in the hopes of giving it its best possible chance of running. And it's safe to say it was absolutely filthy. Um, I'll have to actually go wash my hands. So without any further ado, well, that was a good start. It's a little dead spot there, it appears, but. That's awesome. That is awesome. So following the successful test run, Let's go pick up a train. So we'll go that way around. See if we can cross this point. Ooh. Pick up our train. It'll be the first train it's pulled. Go on, out you go. Ah, oh, that's disappointing. There we go. Point might still need work, but uh, there we go. A set from 1966 or 1967. Been stored in my possession for mm, five or six years, five years. But straight out of the box with minimal work running. So um, that's quite good, actually. Really good. Still stalling a bit there. So there we have it. It would appear that you can get a set that's done nothing for, well, 50 odd years, I guess, up and working with minimal effort, which I am frankly surprised about. All it's really taken is a clean of the track and um, a slight adjustment of the locomotive, which um, I'm surprised about, really. So the things to do next are to see if I can find my oils and give the locomotive a service and see if that makes any difference to how it performs. Try and give the wheels a clean, a bit of contact cleaner here and there. And um, I'll have a look and see if I can find any more track and make a bit of more, well, a bit of a better circuit. See if I can actually balance out the curves a bit and see what I've got. Um, yeah, and see if we can make this a bit better, maybe lose the point, it doesn't like the point, and just get a nice oval going round. So that's something I'll have a play with. Um, I'm sure there must be some more tracks somewhere. But frankly, considering this is totally all unplanned, and done no organisation on this tour, I'm amazed at what I've got. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this little un unboxing and getting something working again. No, I'm going to be quite happy now because I've got a train set to play with. And uh, join us next time. We're probably going to be doing this every, or possibly monthly, I think, Lorry goes a little loco, or something like that, especially while we're cooped up indoors. And there are, well, there's a big box there, which I haven't seen and I forgot was in the loft. There's a box of something else, which I've forgotten about. And then there's a suitcase full of bits and bobs as well. So... We'll be doing a kind of unboxing, opening, and see what I've got over the next episodes and see what we can get working and, yeah, see my excitement as I remember what it is I put in the box because, frankly, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a clue. It's been a long time since that stuff was packed off. I mean, my model railway itself, I had last set up when my nan was alive. And she's been dead now. Oh. Must be coming up to 10 years, I would have thought. So my model railway stuff's been packed away for quite some time. And that's, yeah. So it's lovely to get it out. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, 
share this video with your model railway friends, we're doing something a bit differently, and leave a comment. And of course, remember we've got the Discord, send us some pictures of your model railways and what you're working on, I'd love to see them. Uh, it's a great place to chat to people as well, and the description for there is, uh, well, the link to that is in the video description. So, thanks for watching guys, and at this point I normally link you to a video, but we haven't done anything like this before, so how about clicking somewhere here, and we'll do a link to one of my real locomotive reviews, and click over there for another one of a proper locomotive review. See you later guys, and thanks for watching. Oh, it's stalled, go on, go on, there we go. This needs work, this definitely needs work.